Now coming to the most important applied aspect of respiration that is hypoxia. Hypoxia is very very important and all forms of hypoxia at least one will be asked in the question paper. So hypoxia, what is hypoxia? It is the deficiency of oxygen at the tissue level. Whenever the tissue is not getting oxygen due to any reason, then it is called as hypoxia. The four types of hypoxia include hypoxic hypoxia, anemic hypoxia, stagnant hypoxia and histotoxic hypoxia. We will go in depth of all the types of hypoxia because that is very very important. For all the hypoxia discussion, this will be our common points of discussion. So what we are going to understand, first we will understand what is the type of hypoxia or the cause for that hypoxia. Then few examples of that hypoxia. Then what is the level of dissolved oxygen and hemoglobin bound oxygen. And we will address whether it will stimulate peripheral chemoreceptors or not. I will remind you one more point again. Which stimulates the chemoreceptors? Whenever there is a fall in dissolved O2, then only the chemoreceptor will be stimulated. Hemoglobin bound oxygen does not have any role in stimulating the chemoreceptors. So finally, we will be discussing about the cyanosis. It is present or not. And what is cyanosis? Cyanosis is nothing but the bluish discoloration of skin and mucous membrane. But that is the definition. But again, here the deoxyhemoglobin level should be more than 5 gram per deciliter. Here the deoxy hemoglobin should be more than 5 gram per deciliter. This is very very important because for a little deoxyhemoglobin the cyanosis will not happen. Then finally oxygen therapy. Whether oxygen therapy will be helpful in that particular hypoxia or not. That is what we are going to discuss. So coming to the first hypoxia that is hypoxic hypoxia. As the name suggests it is a form of hypoxia in the atmosphere itself. In the atmosphere there is hypoxia because of which I am getting the hypoxia or there is a ventilatory trouble, I am not able to bring the oxygen to the exchange area. So that is also a form of hypoxic hypoxia. Here the availability of oxygen itself is slow. Here the availability of oxygen itself is slow. So one best example for this is high altitude. Whenever a person is going to high altitude, what will happen? It will form hypoxic hypoxia. Then foreign body obstruction, foreign body is obstructed, air is not moving in. Then VP mismatch or VQ mismatch that is ventilation perfusion imbalance. Then outside oxygen itself is less. So what will happen to the level of dissolved form as well as the hemoglobin form? Both of them will be decreased. Both of them will be decreased. So when dissolved form is decreased, what will happen to the peripheral chemoreceptors? Whenever dissolved form is decreased, the peripheral chemoreceptors will be stimulated because that is the rule. Whenever dissolved form goes in for a decrease, it is always stimulated. Then cyanosis. Obviously, oxygen is not available. Dissolved is also less. Hemoglobin is also less. So what will happen? The deoxy levels can go beyond 5 gram per deciliter and cyanosis can happen. Even when all of us, when we would have traveled to Leh Ladakh or high mountains of Kashmir, what would have happened? We will be de developing cyanosis in the hands, uh, in the toes, in face also. Because the oxygen level itself is very, very low there. Then oxygen therapy, here oxygen is the only demerit. So if we give oxygen, it will be greatly helpful, especially for conditions like high altitude. Because the oxygen availability is not there. That's why people who go to Himalayas, after a certain climbing distance, they always use oxygen cylinders. So oxygen therapy is very, very helpful in this type of hypoxia. Now coming to anemic hypoxia. Anemic hypoxia, what is anemia? Anemia is nothing but the reduced hemoglobin. Whenever the content of hemoglobin goes down, it is called as anemic hypoxia. Here the hemoglobin bound oxygen is decreased, but the dissolved form is completely normal. So this is one important point to note. Here the dissolved form is completely normal. And the classical examples are anemia and CO poisoning. Here the dissolved oxygen is normal and the hemoglobin bound is decreased. So whenever dissolved oxygen is normal, what will happen to the peripheral chemoreceptors? The peripheral chemoreceptors are not stimulated at all. So this is an important demerit actually we will call for anemia as well as SIBO poisoning. Even in a SIBO poisoning, suppose uh, a person is held up in a flat where it is burning. In SIBO poisoning, there is he is inhaling SIBO. But in, even after the SIBO inhalation, there is no stimulation of the peripheral chemoreceptors because the dissolved oxygen levels are going to be completely normal. And cyanosis is very rare. Why it is rare? 
because for cyanosis we need at least 5 gram per deciliter and if the person is anemic even suppose he is having 8 gram per deciliter and he is having anemia if this 8 grams out of this 8 grams if 5 is a deoxyhemoglobin the person would have already died like he will be in severe uh, deteriorating condition that's why the cyanosis is usually very rare in case of severe anemia May, maybe in case of mild to moderate there can be cyanosis can be seen and in CO poisoning the blood becomes cherry red in color so obviously there is no question of asking whether cyanosis will happen or not it is not going to happen in CO poisoning is very dangerous why because it takes up the place of oxygen as well as whichever oxygen is bound that is also not released in the tissue and suppose if you are doing it the oxygen levels in a pulse oximeter it senses the infrared radiations and the color so what will happen it is sensing the color it is giving cherry red so the saturation probe might show you 100 percent oxygen which is completely not there because the person condition is deteriorating a lot so the saturation probe will show the oxygen levels as 100 percent saturated so that is again a demerit of CO poisoning so coming to oxygen therapy whenever we increase the oxygen therapy it is also not that helpful why because the hemoglobin bound form is at a defect hemoglobin itself is reduced oxygen therapy can increase the hemoglobin bound form only because now hemoglobin itself is not there there is not much of helpfulness in the oxygen therapy but in case of carbon monoxide poisoning what we can do is there can be the administration of hyperbaric oxygen what is hyperbaric oxygen when oxygen is giving given under high increased pressure like for example fourth atmospheric pressure we are giving oxygen so what will happen is we are giving the oxygen at 6000 iatms atmospheres this can increase the level of dissolved oxygen this can increase the level of dissolved oxygen content and it can save the vital tissues from going into hypoxia so the hyperbaric oxygen can be used in cases of carbon monoxide poisoning but as such oxygen therapy like pure oxygen is not that helpful now coming to the third form of hypoxia that is stagnant hypoxia what is stagnant hypoxia if there is a tissue what is happening is the blood flow or the circulatory system is very very slow the blood is stagnated here for a longer time so what is going to happen it is going to extract for example let's take it is extracting 5 ml of oxygen one round this has to move out but it is taking another 5 ml from the same amount of blood for example this blood contains 20 ml of oxygen for the same from the same 20 ml it is going to extract oxygen again and again in case of stagnant hypoxia so stagnant hypoxia that is the issue here the hypoxia is happening due to reduction in flow of blood what could be the conditions in case of shock in case of hypotension congestive heart failure or a circulatory failure here what will happen both dissolved and hemoglobin form is normal because the lung is functioning properly they can be normal but the there is a problem in case of that but still the person is having hypoxia both dissolved form so if the dissolved form is normal will the peripheral chemoreceptors be stimulated obviously the answer is no but if it is a gross stagnant hypoxia like there is too much of stagnation in many places then it will extract oxygen from the same blood and it can extract the dissolved form also so they can stimulate a peripheral chemoreceptors whenever the dissolved form falls but not at the initial levels cyanosis obviously it is extracting oxygen from the same amount of blood so more and more deoxygen hemoglobins are present so cyanosis is usually present at least locally if there is a local stagnation after some period of time there will be a local cyanosis happening there oxygen therapy is it helpful no because the underlying condition itself is not an oxygen problem so oxygen therapy is not of great benefit in this person now coming to the final form of hypoxia that is histotoxic hypoxia what is histo histo is nothing but the tissue toxic here the tissue has become toxic so that is the problem with the tissue so there is not availability of oxygen leading on to the histotoxic hypoxia here the tissue has become toxic and it is not able to extract oxygen instead of available oxygen it is not able to extract oxygen so the classical examples for this is cyanide poisoning and beriberi here everything is normal like the dissolved form is normal hemoglobin is normal hemoglobin bound oxygen is normal everything is normal but the tissue is not able to take the oxygen so both dissolved as well as hemoglobin found bound form are normal so if the dissolved is normal will the peripheral chemoreceptors be stimulated the answer is no but in these two examples 
cyanide we have to concentrate because cyanide is a direct stimulant of peripheral chemoreceptors. They directly stimulate the peripheral chemoreceptors. So in cyanide poisoning, even though the histotoxic hypoxia, the dissolved form is completely normal, still in cyanide poisoning, the peripheral chemoreceptors can be stimulated. Cyanosis will never happen because the dissolved oxygen, hemoglobin oxygen, everything with oxygen is normal. There is no production of deoxyhemoglobin. So cyanosis never happens. Oxygen therapy, the tissue is at fault. Is there any use in giving oxygen? The answer is no. So oxygen therapy is completely useless. Now let's try to summarize all these features in the tabular form. So here we have written the parameters and here we have written the four types of hypoxia. So let's start with PaO2. Partial pressure of oxygen is reduced in only one type of hypoxia. That is in case of hypoxic hypoxia. In rest all these cases the problem is something else. So the PaO2 will be normal. This PaO2 will be completely normal. Whereas it comes of dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen is also reduced in only in case of histotoxic hy sorry, hypoxic hypoxia. Whereas it's completely normal in rest of them. Hemoglobin bound oxygen. Hemoglobin bound oxygen in case of hypoxic hypoxia, hypoxic hypoxia, both will be reduced like oxygen dissolved and hemoglobin bound. In anemic hypoxia, obviously it will be reduced because the problem itself with the hemoglobin. So it will be reduced. Whereas in case of stagnant and histotoxic hypoxia, they are usually normal. They are usually normal. Now coming to the peripheral chemoreceptor stimulation. Peripheral chemoreceptors will be stimulated only when the dissolved oxygen falls. The dissolved oxygen falls in only one condition. So there is a stimulation here. In anemic hypoxia, there is no stimulation. There is no stimulation. In case of stagnant hypoxia, when the dissolved form forms, yes, it can, but at a later stage. Later stage. Whereas in case of histotoxic hypoxia, peripheral chemoreceptors will not be stimulated. In case of cyanide poisoning, it is directly stimulated. That is very, very important. Then cyanosis, it can happen here. Whereas in, in case of anemic hypoxia, we don't see a cyanosis. Whereas in case of stagnant hypoxia, yes, we can see a cyanosis. In case of histotoxic hypoxia, cyanosis never happens. This is very, very important. Never happens. Because everything with oxygen is completely normal. Oxygen therapy, it is of maximum benefit in case of hypoxic hypoxia because oxygen itself is defect. Then anemic hypoxia, it's not useful. But in case of CO poisoning, we can go in for a hyperbaric oxygen. Stagnant hypoxia, it is not that benefit. Histotoxic hypoxia, it is completely useless. Here, giving oxygen therapy is of no point because the problem is with the tissue. So, these two are the classical things that we have to remember for histotoxic hypoxia.